health nuts, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a delicious, flavorful and super simple soup recipe. I'm making my roasted butternut squash recipe and because I thought, you know, butternut squash is a, a pretty basic recipe, I wanted to spice it up by also showing you guys how to do some crispy chickpea croutons and some garlicky cheesy uh, crispy kale. So these are gonna be your toppings for the soup. They add some texture, flavor, lots of dimension to a like a basic creamy soup. Um, but there actually is no cream in the soup. There's no cream, there's no cashews, coconut milk, none of that stuff, just broth and roasted vegetables and it is so flavorful you won't even believe how good this tastes when you make it. So let's just hop right in so you guys can share the butternut squash love and, um, and make the soup. Okay, let's hop right in. First thing for this soup, of course, is butternut squash. And you can basically find the squash at most grocery stores all year round, which is really convenient. And one of my favorite ways to roast it is just to slice it right in half and scoop out all of the seeds from the middle like you would a pumpkin. So I'm gonna take a cookie sheet lined with some parchment paper. I'm also taking a bulb of garlic that I just cut the top off and I'm gonna place that on some foil. And then I took one large shallot and I just roughly chopped it. And you're gonna drizzle everything with a tiny bit of olive oil. I added a little bit too much, but I just then brushed it on with a silicone brush, which I find is really convenient to kind of get in all the nooks and crannies. You can really use any type of oil. This is just what I had on hand. So give everything a really good rub. And then I'm gonna add in my spices. So I'm using all good quality organic spices. I have some garlic powder here. Next up, I have some turmeric powder, some cayenne, and this is gonna give the soup some heat, which is really nice, especially in the colder months. Some dried thyme, you can use fresh as well if you have that on hand. Black pepper. And last but not least, some sea salt. I'm gonna wrap up my little garlic, and I'm telling you this is gonna be the best thing ever. It turns into garlic butter. And then I'm just gonna take a sharp knife and put a few stabs into the meat of the butternut squash to help it cook all the way through. I'm gonna put them face down and pop that into the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. So I took one can of chickpeas, drained and rinsed them really well. So I like to peel off the skins. This is totally optional, but it just makes them crisp up really nice in the oven. So I'm gonna do this to all of them. And while I do this, I usually put on like a podcast or something. I'm actually listening to my friend Erica's podcast. It's all about like business and stuff. I'll link it down below. She did do an interview with me. So I'll link that episode below if you wanna listen to it while you peel your chickpeas and then dry off your chickpeas on a nice clean tea towel to get them nice and dry. You'll need another cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and spread out your chickpeas on one side. And then on the other side, I just took some roughly chopped kale. I'm using dinosaur kale or black kale here, but you can use any kale that you like. Spread it all out. Drizzle over some olive oil and I like to just give the kale a little massage with my hands just to kind of break it down and soften it up a bit. And then for spices, I have some garlic powder. I love using garlic powder instead of just crushed garlic because it's not gonna burn when you roast it. Freshly cracked black pepper. Sea salt. And then just over the kale to give it a nice cheesy taste, I'm gonna sprinkle on some nutritional yeast. Roast it in the oven. Now the chickpeas take about 40 to 45 minutes and the kale takes only 15 minutes. I will have all the directions on my blog linked in the info box. Once your veggies are done roasting, you just wanna take some kind of spoon or scooper to take out all of the meat. I find that just a metal measuring spoon works really well to scrape out all of the meat. Transfer your butternut squash meat into a large pot with four cups of chicken or vegetable broth. Add in your roasted shallot, along with your garlic butter. You could do this just by simply squeezing it all out. You don't wanna actually add in the skin. This is so good, even just spread on some toast in the morning. You may have vampire breath, uh, but honestly, it's the best thing ever. And during cold and flu season, you honestly wanna eat as much garlic as you can. 
I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and season with some more salt, pepper, and a little cayenne pepper to taste. Give it a stir and then just bring this up to a boil. Once it's done boiling, you can turn off the heat and I'm gonna ladle it into a high-speed blender. I like to do this in two batches, otherwise you run the risk of it exploding everywhere. So anytime you're using hot liquid in a blender, just make sure that the top is ventilated a little bit uh, so that it doesn't explode because pressure and heat and steam, you know, science. <laughs> blend it all up for about 15 to 30 seconds for each batch. And this is what it looks like when it's all blended up. And when you're ready to serve, simply grab your bowls, transfer your soup. You can literally transfer it straight from the blender. It'll be nice and hot and creamy smooth. To make it extra fancy, sprinkle on some more spices. And then garnish with that crispy, garlicky, cheesy kale and your roasted chickpeas. The texture of the kale and the chickpeas works amazing with this creamy roasted butternut squash soup. Highly recommend adding these toppings. And there you have it, a super easy, flavorful roasted butternut squash soup. I promise will warm you up during the cold months. It's also delicious if you just dip some toasted sourdough bread right in. All right guys, that's how you make my roasted butternut squash soup. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you try it out and take a photo, be sure to send me one on social media. Tag me at your health net so I can easily find it and like it. I love resharing your photos and commenting and liking them. It honestly just makes my day when you guys recreate my recipes. Uh, also, we just hit 300,000 followers on YouTube. Like, what is life right now? Uh, yeah, I woke up this morning and uh, we hit it. We're already actually past 300, which is so, so cool. I can't even believe, like, what? Like, the Health Nut family is so freaking huge. I'm just like, mind blown, really, guys. Um, I feel like we can hit half a million by the end of this year. Like, I'm so excited for this year. I have so many exciting things on the way and I just wanna say thank you so much to all your support for sharing my videos. Like, honestly, that's the best way to get to grow the HealthNet families, to share it with someone you know, a friend, a family member, a coworker that you know is looking to eat better, maybe get some healthy inspiration for their life, especially for the start of a new year. And that is really how the channel grows. So thank you, thank you so much. Also, I love every single one of your comments, your avocado emojis, your hashtag HealthNetFam. Uh, you guys are seriously the best and I love reading every single one of your comments. So thank you so, so much. And here is to 500,000 by the end of 2018. I feel like if I set that intention now, we're definitely gonna hit it, right? So we'll just, fingers crossed, I feel like we can do it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. Uh, I will have the whole recipe linked down below on the blog so you can follow along, you can save it, you can pin it, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys, Mwah. love you.